Hello and welcome back to another video in this tech discovery series. Today we're going to be looking at DuckDB. So usually in these videos we look through the documentation a little bit. I don't really want to do that too much today. Instead I've prepared a couple of scripts which we can look at which will actually show us some metrics about the time it takes to retrieve data and insert data into an SQL Lite database and a DuckDB database and then we can actually see for ourselves uh, what a use case of uh, DuckDB might be. So yeah, stick around for that because I think you'll find it quite interesting. So as always, there's so much we could cover if we really wanted to. That's why I'm always just going to make it a part one in case I want to cover more. But for the most part, what I'm interested in today is this, fast. I wanted to know in which instance DuckDB would be faster than something like SQLite or Postgres or just, just a more traditional uh, SQL database. So yeah, that's what the two scripts I wrote will show us. And if you're like me, I just hate jargon. You know, optimized for analytics, vectorized and parallel engine, larger than memory processing, parallel... Look, to me, you know, I don't think I'm that stupid, but often I just don't know what it means. I just like to see an example, and I want to see that this technology has a use case. Like, why would I use it instead of SQLite or Postgres or whatever? And I think that's often why JavaScript frameworks are just a meme. Like, what can you achieve in one framework generally that you can't achieve in any other? It's just sort of engineering for the sake of engineering. Uh, anyway. So just quickly then, before we look at the code, there is two sort of acronyms we need to look at. One is OLAP, which is what DuckDB is all about, and then the other one is OLTP. Now I don't want to go into them too much and confuse people, but I think OLTP is pretty much just normal SQL queries, you know, like uh, insert, get, update, delete, that kind of stuff. Uh, that might be wrong, but I think that's pretty much the gist. Whereas OLAP then, um, optimized for complex data analysis and reporting, so OLAP is essentially, let's get my code up actually, when you also have some kind of operation in your query, i.e. Your count or sum or average, something like that. So you're not just pulling data, but you're also doing an operation on the data you're pulling. So that's pretty much it. So yeah, if all you're ever trying to do is just fetch a piece of data and add a piece of data, delete or update, then there's no reason for you to be using DuckDB. You're better off just using something like Postgres. Okay, so what we've got here is I created two test scripts, test one and test two. Test one is for DuckDB, test two is for SQLite, and they do exactly the same thing. We create 10,000 records, uh, which we then add to our databases, and then we do a OLAP-esque query, i.e. we've got an operation in there. I think that's the correct word. I'm not actually sure if that's the correct word, but yeah, it's an operation. Um, again, doing the same one here, and all we're doing is calculating the time uh, to insert and the time to fetch. So a couple of things we quickly need to do, just I'm going to remove that SQLite database, and I'm going to activate my virtual environment. And something I feel like I need to say again, these videos aren't really meant to be tutorials, they're more meant to be for the exploration, exploration of different technologies. So a couple of packages I installed, just pandas and DuckDB like this. All you have to do for DuckDB, as you can see, is pip install, and then DuckDB and, you know, 8.13. So just copy exactly that. Uh, and it's also in their documentation. Uh, anyway, so I think we'll actually start by executing our test script 2, uh, which is the SQLite one. And we can see to insert all our data, 10,000 records, was 0 0.07 seconds. So really quick. And to query the data and get it back, uh, with the with this query took 0 0.019 seconds. Now this will probably have some variance. It won't be the same every single time you do it. In fact, if we want to run it again and just do RM SQLite database and do that again, it's going to be slightly different, but pretty much the same-ish. So DuckDB is a bit more interesting because what we're going to find is that it's going to take a really long time to insert data. So there you have it, crazy amount of time to insert data, 23, almost 24 seconds to insert the 10,000 records, exactly the same data as the SQLite data. However, when we were querying the same data, we can see this is significantly faster. So let's get calculator out. So here are the initial results. So I did the two divisions and we found that to insert, it was 330 times slower with DuckDB than like SQLite, uh, but actually retrieving the records was 2.5 times faster, which you may at first be like, well, that's not a lot. Um, but 
which is true, but it's still, you know, if that 2.5 is important to you, then you can probably sacrifice this by having it running in a, like, updating the data in the back end in like a cron job. Anyway, but we're going to continue going because what we can do is we can add more data. I also just quickly modified the code to make sure that we're dropping the table if it exists, um, just to make sure it's completely empty because although we can delete the SQLite database, I wasn't sure how to delete the um, DuckDB database, or table, I should say. So for both of these now, we can change this number to five, so 50,000 records, and we can do it again. Okay, so as you can see, this time for 50,000 records, DuckDB insertion time was 115 seconds, which is obviously astronomical. But we can see this time, there's a pretty clear difference in the amount of time it took to retrieve the record. So let's do the calculation same as before. So once again, using my favorite calculator app, ChatGPT, we did the same calculations. So as before, it's roughly 300 times slower, in this case, 325 slower to insert using DuckDB versus SQLite. Um, however, this time we see a huge improvement on the retrieval. We can see that retrieving the data was 96 times faster with DuckDB uh, than SQLite, which is a huge performance boost um, on the retrieving front. So I guess now we should quickly talk about how we could use DuckDB. But before we do that, I just want to say we really just focused on one of its features. I just want to reiterate, there's probably loads of things that I don't know about this that are cool, that you can do, that you can't do with other databases. So having said that, I think we did find a use case though. We found that DuckDB genuinely is much better than something like SQLite at returning a lot of data on which we're performing operations. And I have to imagine that DuckDB also provides us loads of ways in which to do cool operations on that data. So that's a use case. If you're trying to return lots of data, and you're trying to do operations on said data. Now, the obvious elephant in the room and the thing we need to talk about is the amount of time it takes to insert that data. Um, how do we get around that? Or how can we think of a system where we get around that? And actually, just out of curiosity, I have just updated the code to um, just add one piece of data for both of them. Let's see what that does. So same as before, let's do that. That's our SQLite, and then that's our DuckDB. So actually I'm intrigued by this because although the querying seems to have been faster in the SQLite, um, the entry was faster for DuckDB than SQLite. So I did it again, this time with 10 records rather than one, and this time we found that SQLite is still slower than DuckDB, and the retrieving of the data I think is still faster um, with SQLite. So it's quite interesting. What you essentially need to do is find that breaking point. At what point is it slower to use DuckDB to insert and when is it faster to query it? Do you know what? Initially I was going to suggest something like you might want to use SQLite or Postgres or whatever um, for your normal application. So let's say you're just a user using a normal application and you're adding data, updating, deleting, all the normal stuff. Like imagine using Facebook or something. Uh, in that case I thought Okay, use something like Postgres, and then what you could do is you could use a cron job and schedule that into DuckDB, and if you're trying to retrieve lots of data, uh, use that database to return things. But now I'm not so sure, because it seems like DuckDB, for small data inserts, is actually faster than SQLite. So it's more the opposite, so it's when you're trying to insert lots of data, then DuckDB no longer is very good, and what you need is you probably want a buffer. So it might be that if you're trying to insert lots of data at once, you want to use something like Postgres, which is more sort of flat. It won't take much more and more time um, to add data. Uh, but with DuckDB, it does take more and more time. So yeah, what you'd want to do in that case, if you're inserting lots of data, first use Postgres and then have some job running in the background, which updates your DuckDB. Um, and that's obviously only in the case where you're then also trying to return lots of data um, in the way we showed in this video. So yeah, hopefully that made sense. Uh, but we could talk about quickly talk about practical examples. So I think when I think of DuckDB now, I'm sort of thinking like a dashboard, uh, maybe for a retail company or something where you're just trying to get insight into all your data. You know, you could sum all your sales, all that sort of stuff. Um, in which case, DuckDB is really good. So yeah, in conclusion, if you want to use DuckDB to insert large amounts of data at once, 
you probably want a buffer before that with like an SQLite database or Postgres and then have a job running in the background that updates it. Um, if you're returning lots of data, then DuckDB is fine, especially if you're running operations on it. And yeah, but sounds, I think the bit that interests me is that actually DuckDB isn't as bad as I thought it would be for small operations. Uh, it seems to be more than good enough for just building like a web app. So yeah. Anyway, that's all for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to, you know, watch me view more technologies and feel free to recommend anything you want me to look at.